Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. This is a summary table of all the most common treatment options for hip arthritis. There's a lot of information here and my goal is to simplify everything and go over all the treatment recommendations that I recommend to my patients who suffer from hip arthritis. Let's dive right in. Now, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Osteoarthritis of the hip is a chronic disease that can have a devastating impact on quality of life and day-to-day -day function. And in treating many people with arthritis, I've found that most people have a limited understanding of what it is and how to manage it. And so by far the most important thing that I want my patients with arthritis to understand is that arthritis is no longer something you should just suffer with and just deal with. It's something that you want to actively treat and something that you want to actively manage. Think of arthritis like aging. We can't reverse aging, but there are lots of things that we can do to potentially slow down the effects of aging, right? Daily exercise, nutrition, getting good sleep, prioritizing mental health, all of these will have a major impact on how we age. And much is the same with arthritis. Once you have it, we can't reverse it and we can't get rid of it. But there are lots of things that we can do to treat it and change how arthritis manifests. Think of it like another way. If you have high blood pressure, you may want to take a blood pressure medication to try to control your blood pressure. We don't wait for someone to have a heart attack before telling them, oh, now is a good time to treat your high blood pressure. And the same is true for arthritis. If arthritis is left untreated, it will get worse. And you don't want it to get worse because that leads to worse outcomes. And this is why I recommend a multimodal approach to treating arthritis. And everything is summarized in this table. Now, I know there is a lot of information here, but let's break it down together. I like to approach treating arthritis using five big categories. The first four are treatment options that provide short-term pain relief, treatment options that provide long-term pain relief, and treatment options that improve the integrity of the joint and decrease the risk of getting a hip replacement. Now with every treatment option, we also want to take into account the risk of major side effects. And so that is the fifth big category. Okay, so I wanna first start down here. These are the treatment options that I recommend using sparingly or ones that I really don't recommend. There are a lot of misconceptions around these treatment options, so I really wanna to try to clarify them. The first treatment option is oral pain medications. These include pain relieving medications such as Tylenol and opiates, as well as anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen or naproxen. So let's first talk about Tylenol. Tylenol or acetaminophen is perfectly safe to take as long as you don't have any liver disease, and that's because Tylenol is cleared from the body by the liver. So if you do have liver problems, then you will have decreased clearance of Tylenol and it can build up to dangerous levels in your body and that can cause acute liver failure. Now, if you don't have liver issues and Tylenol works well in controlling your pain, then it is actually a great treatment option in providing short-term pain relief. The next class of drugs are NSAIDs. These are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and examples include ibuprofen and naproxen. These actually work really well in shorting short short-term pain related to arthritis specifically because of their anti-inflammatory effects. But NSAIDs have a much more dangerous side effect profile, especially when compared to Tylenol. When taken for a prolonged period of time, NSAIDs cause problems to the heart, the kidneys, and the stomach. And they also increase your risk for heart attacks and strokes and can cause dangerously high blood pressure. So anyone with any type of cardiovascular disease needs to be extremely cautious when using NSAIDs. With that said, when used sparingly, they can be effective in treating short-term pain, but they should never be used long-term without first checking in with your doctor. What about opiate medications such as hydrocodone or oxycodone? Opiates have significant pain relieving properties. However, they come with major side effects and are extremely habit forming. I do not recommend the use of opiates in the treatment of arthritis because their side effect profile is just so dangerous. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is that oral pain medications only target short term pain. It does nothing to help long term pain and does not have any effect on arthritis progression. They do serve an important role during arthritis flares, but they should not be viewed as a long term 
long-term treatment option for arthritis. Now, what about steroid injections? Steroid injections or cortisone injections are extremely strong anti-inflammatory medications, which we can put into a syringe and then inject into the hip with the hope of decreasing pain and inflammation. They work pretty well in controlling short-term pain, but for most patients, the effects are short-lived, on average about one to three months. They have no long-term pain relieving effects, but the bigger concern with steroid injections are their side effect profiles. Multiple studies have shown that steroid injections cause long-term structural damage to the hip. Steroids are chondrotoxic, meaning they damage the cartilage and increase the risk of developing more arthritis. One recent study reported that even one cortisone injection significantly increased the risk of developing rapidly destructive hip disease. So with steroid injections, you are trading short-term pain relief at the cost of long-term damage. Now, if one steroid injection is what is required to get you back on your feet and participating in other treatment options, such as exercise therapy, and load management, then it still serves a role. I am just very cautious about putting more than two cortisone shots in a person's hip unless they have already lost all their cartilage and are already bone on bone. Otherwise, the risk of cartilage damage is just too high, especially when there are so many other options. Okay, what about hip arthroscopy or more commonly called a hip scope? Why can't a surgeon just go in and quote unquote, clean everything up? Well, that's what used to be done, and hip arthroscopies have been studied extensively in the orthopedic literature for degenerative hip disease. Many studies have come to the same conclusion. People who get hip arthroscopy for arthritis have significantly higher rates of going on to needing a hip replacement surgery and have overall worse outcomes. Now, this is a slight overgeneralization as there are still very specific indications in which hip arthroscopy can still be beneficial. And so talk to your doctor about your specific situation. Okay, so what about treatment options that I actually do recommend? Let's first talk about the two most effective treatment options for hip arthritis, and that's exercise therapy and load management. And while these may not provide immediate pain relief, they are supported by many studies and they seem to be the best long-term option in controlling symptoms related to arthritis. Just remember this phrase, motion is lotion. When we move, we are lubricating the joints and the day we stop moving, we stop lubricating the joints. And all that stiffness and locking and catching related to arthritis returns along with the pain and the swelling. In addition, exercise therapy has been shown to decrease the progression of arthritis and has excellent long-term pain benefits. Exercise therapy is also incredibly important to restoring function. People who have been pain for a long time tend to be weaker in their affected leg. For example, if I am suffering from hip arthritis in my right hip, I tend to favor my left and over the course of weeks to months, my right hip gets weaker and weaker. And that's because our bodies are trying to protect it by offloading it. This results in muscle atrophy. So exercise therapy not only helps reduces pain, but it helps restore strength. Exercise therapy is by far the most important treatment option for everyone who suffers from arthritis. Now just to review, the CDC and the American Heart Association recommends 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activities, preferably spread throughout the week. This might sound like a lot, but all it is is 30 minutes brisk walk five times a week. And if you can get more than this, that would be even better. Great examples of low impact aerobic activity include walking, swimming, cycling, and jogging on an elliptical. In addition, specific exercises to help strengthen the hip muscles around the hip, as well as in the legs, can be extremely beneficial for those who suffer from hip arthritis. Now, right up there with exercise therapy is load management. Load management comes in two varieties. The first is activity modification. Are you doing anything repetitive that involves constantly overloading the hip? If yes, you may need to modify. For example, we know recreational running is actually beneficial to those with hip arthritis and actually prevents arthritis from getting worse. But extreme high intensity interval training or elite long distance running can be detrimental and cause more arthritis. So it's all about making adjustments and modifying. I often advise my long distance runners to incorporate more cycling or swimming or even running on an elliptical so that they can still get a great workout but not overload the hips. 
Now, the second aspect of load management is weight, and this is a simple physics problem. The more weight you carry around in your body, the more weight you're going to load onto your joints, the more weight you're going to load on into your hips. And over time, this is going to overload the hips and lead to more arthritis. And so exercise therapy and weight management go hand in hand. Now, diet also plays a critical role. In general, you're going to want to eat an anti-inflammatory diet, one that is rich in fruits and vegetables and nuts, beans, and whole grains. A great example of an anti-inflammatory diet is the Mediterranean diet. These foods are rich in antioxidants and nutrients that reduce inflammatory signaling cells and decrease cartilage degradation. Everyone who wants to actively manage their arthritis really needs to pay attention to diet, weight, and exercise. People who are successful in making these lifestyle changes have significantly decreased risk of ending up with a hip replacement surgery. Okay, let's talk about hip injections. There are actually much better options out there besides cortisone. The first option is called visco supplementation. Other names that it goes by are hyaluronic acid or gel shots. These are synthetically made molecules that help lubricate the joint. They have pain relieving and anti-inflammatory effects when injected into the hip. Now, one important thing to point out about visco supplementation is that there is a lot of back and forth in the medical literature about whether or not they work. That is true of their use in knee arthritis, and it's even more true about their use in hip arthritis. And because of the back and forth, many insurance companies no longer cover these injections. But more recent studies suggest that people who get ultrasound guided visco supplementation injections have an excellent benefit because they feel better, they have less need for a joint replacement surgery. The only potential downside of visco supplementation is the very rare possibility of an allergic reaction. Again, this is relatively uncommon. So if covered by insurance, visco supplementation is an easy choice over cortisone injections. It can greatly benefit multiple categories with only minimal chance of side effects. Okay, so what about PRP? PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma and is the latest and greatest in terms of what we are using to treat hip arthritis. I made an entire video explaining why PRP injections are so effective in treating hip arthritis, so check that out for more details. Trials comparing PRP to cortisone and PRP to visco supplementation show one clear winner. PRP has better effects in treating short-term pain and long-term pain. More and more studies are also showing that PRP injections can improve the biochemistry of the joint to prevent further structural loss as well as delay the need for a joint replacement surgery. And the beauty of PRP is that we're using your own cells, your own platelets, and your own growth factors to treat pain and to treat inflammation. So you can get as many of these injections as you want without fear of side effects. This is why I give PRP injections a moderate to high recommendation for treatment. Remember, the important thing about hip arthritis treatment is that we want to take a multimodal approach. We want to use multiple treatment options that will target as many of the five big categories as possible. And because of this, I routinely encourage all of my patients to work on exercise therapy as well as weight and load management, as well as to consider injection therapy, specifically using either PRP or visco supplementation. Taking this multimodal approach puts you in the best position possible for success and so that that you can continue to live an active and healthy lifestyle. And if you're interested in learning more about PRP injections in general or PRP injections for the hip, then you're definitely going to want to check out these next videos. Thanks for watching.